What's up? What's good? It's your boy Terrence J, man. You know, listen, man, we all during these quarantine times got to check in on the fam, make sure everybody's good. And right now, one of my favorite people, man, we have very long conversations and uh, I'm glad y'all get to, to listen in on one of them. My brother, Director X, what's happening, boy? What up, bro? How you feeling, man? You all right? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Uh, so what's going on with you, man? I just told you I took my test yesterday. This 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 whole thing feels crazy. How have you been feeling through everything that's been happening? I mean, I go through waves, you know what I mean? We're both repping on the hat game. I got the 100 miles Toronto line. You got your LA hat. We both... Uh, <laughs> all day, all day. You know what I'm saying? Represent. Um, look, it's... I don't know, I'm like saying, go through waves. Like, for the first two weeks, I was really online doing a lot of, um, you know, arguing about herbal medicine and just that whole thing. And then the next two weeks, I was on another wave. And now I'm really kind of thinking about work, studying the craft and, you know, reading a lot. So to finally, we keep ourselves occupied because, uh, you know, what else, what else are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? It's so hard to catch a rhythm. I've been waking up like at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., my body's off, you know, uh, just trying to sleep through the full night. And just like you said, man, it's, you know, when I go to the gym, it's easy to stay motivated in the gym. It's so hard when you're at home. It's so hard to eat right when you're at home all day. Yeah. And then with no end in sight, it's like, all right, I don't have to work towards my gym body yet. I still got time. Like it's, it's 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 tough when there's there's no end date in sight for us. Yeah, you know, and I'm like I'm a deadline guy too, right? So I can put something off until they're like, all right, well we need this Monday, but then I'm on it. But when it's just one of those, hey, you know, read this script, <laughs> get back to us. Uh, it's, it's, it's all that, man. It's, it's um, it's just strange days, brother. Strange, strange days. But, you know, despite anything that's going on in the world, you've always managed to stay creative, come out with innovative projects, push the envelope. What is your key to tapping into that level of creativity? Well, I mean, part of it is the technology allows us to, to, to keep cracking at things, right? So even if I'm not if fully in the mode to create or write or draw or make something, I can lose myself in the craft. You no, know, there is... Some kid has dedicated, I guarantee, no matter what you're interested, there's some kid who's dedicated themselves to making YouTube videos about it on a regular basis, you know? Yeah. So, and as a filmmaker, I'm, I'm lucky. I can, I got a playlist that I collect these filmmaking, you know, hundreds of videos. I must have 300 in there. There's kids who do it about story. They do it about script writing. They do it about cinematography. They do it about acting. They do really kind of insightful um looks into the craft that I can lose myself in. You know what I mean? Because uh, I was already... What are some of those pages? What, like, you just go on YouTube and then you find... Yeah, filmmaking, just type it in. YouTube, filmmaking, um, you know, essay. Filmmaking, mm -hmm. video essays. There's a lot of people who... A lot of people who make video essays. So filmmaking, video essays, and stuff will come out. And again, they do about everything. Acting, story. There's a lot of people who do it about story. Yeah. Right, it's kind of the next level of being a film critic, because uh, there's a lot of people who get on and just kind of criticize a movie. I'm talking about people who are deep in there, like this inciting incident doesn't connect to the setup of the theme, and that's why the climax point is far too. <laughs> they're they're like they're like it's like film school. They're like professors, film professors, and then there's reading, you know. Then there's a good old school just reading the books about about these things. So when you come out, at least your skill set is better. As opposed to, there's a lot of like, if you don't got a new skill, by the time you come out of quarantine, you ain't really about your, you know, how about if you haven't improved yours? How about, you know I mean? At some point, just d dive into your craft. There was a moment in time uh, between when I graduated from college before I made it on TV. And, you know, I was just super poor, had a bunch of student debt, and I couldn't even afford a TV in, in the apartment I had. And I, I would just spend hours and hours in Barnes and Noble, right? And, and I was just, that's, that's back when I read Who Moves My Cheese and The Alchemist for the first time and, you know, One Minute Manager and all these, these books. And it became the foundation for a bunch of stuff that I did later on in my life. And, and I feel like that's been the same. I just read uh, the, 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 the Divine Law of Compensation, uh, which was an incredible book. I went back and re 
read The Art of War. Um, and I haven't read that in, in like 10 years. Mm. And so, yeah, I just, I agree with you fully in just taking this time. You know, you don't have to come out with, with, a, with a six pack, but at least sharpening or improving upon whatever your, your, your skill base can be is, is valuable within this time. Totally, man. If you're interested in it, then, then, then here you go. And you kind of find, you find what you're not interested in anymore. Yeah. You know, um, my favorite art, my favorite art of war line is, um, always only use a, a battle oh, but, yeah, uh, to exploit a victory, never to rescue a defeat. One, 100%. And for us out there, whether it's going into a pitch meeting, uh, you know, whatever it may be, that's something we can, we can apply every, every day. Uh, what have you been watching on the film side? What do you like right now? What are you watching on TV? What are you on Netflix checking out? I, 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 went, I caught up on all the shows. That was it. For, for two weeks, I was just catching up on shows. So I caught up on Narcos, Mexico. Yep. Um, I did... Uh, you also, Ozark? Huh? I did Ozark season three, and I think Ozark might have been the first one I caught up on. Yeah. Did Ozark? Um, I did all Westworld. I mean, I hadn't watched any Westworld till this went down. Now I'm all Westworld. Uh, oh, just all caught up. Season two was a little. It was a little tough for me with with yeah. the story. Season one was just mind blowing, and then season three was so much fun. It was so fun to get out of Westworld and go to different different worlds. It, it, okay. well, what I liked about it is, you know, like I'm a nerd, right? So. A lot of science fiction, they avoid the real day, everyday life of people. They, yeah. they always make it a military setting. You're on a spaceship, you're in the military, whatever. So you you never go to a planet and just go on a date and just get like, because we're still going to get coffee in 300 years. We're still yeah. going to take the girl out. You're still going to, you know what I mean? Like, but what is that like in the future? At least it feels like Westworld is touching on that kind of interesting, interesting uh, life. But, um, you know. They didn't predict a, a pandemic keeping us all inside our house for us. <laughs> oh, man. It, it, it's been crazy. Uh, so have you been going stir crazy in the house or have days been okay for you? Mentally? They're okay. I'm, I split my time up, right? So I got, a, I got a place downtown and a place uptown. My son is uptown. So I do that and, you know. You in and, Toronto or you you in L.A.? I'm in Toronto. So, uh, and then I can come downtown and, you know, do phone calls late at night, do whatever I got to, whatever I got to do. So I can split it up. But yeah, man, when I'm, when I'm in this place right now, I can understand, this would not be fun by yourself. And, you know, this is, for a downtown apartment, this is big and spacious, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, some kid is in a studio apartment and just kind of, <laughs> you know what I'm There, like, it's, this would be a very rough ride to do alone. Families, you know, if you have multiple people in the crib, it's, it's, it's tough, man. So, you know, my, my heart goes out to, to anybody that's in a bad position during this time, mm. anybody that was in a transitional phase. Imagine if you were about to move or about to oh start a new job or anything like that. All the college kids graduating on the cusp of, of their life and then, yeah. and then they're stuck and then you know everybody working in, in medical fields and at the grocery stores and gas stations like it's just it's it's one of those time frames where it's it's unprecedented uh i think you know when when i try to look at why god did this and try to look at the silver linings there are conversations like this that are beautiful and being able to spend time with your your friends and people that you know you and i have talked on the phone more now in yeah. the past couple of months, because now we have time. It's like we're not rushing, and and it is good to build relationships. That that is one of the the, the benefits of it. Well, you know, I look at this man. The, this the system we're in has needed to change for a long time, and you know, you know like we were saying yesterday, I've been paying attention to world politics yep. worldwide. The the amount of protests that were going on, we we were at a breaking point with the system, mm -hmm. and. It's just not tenable. This, this is, we're in a moment in history that will go down in history as uh, in the same way like the French Revolution with, with the, the, the gap between the rich and poor. And the, we, it, it, it's, it's, it was ugly before this happened. And now it's cracking. And, we've, and I've long said, look, we, our society is, a, we have a make-believe society. There's what's real and make-believe, you know what I mean? And we've confused it all. So mm -hmm. money is a make-believe thing. We've yep. made ourselves believe that it does what, what it does. But at the same time, you need a game. You need money. You need a game chip. It's just the way we function, right? Mm -hmm. But we, we move it 
make make believe and none. So you you get sick, you need the make believe money to get better. That doesn't make sense. You you're a smart kid. You have the ability to be at one of the best schools in the world, but you don't have to make believe money, so you don't get to go. Like you know, what I'm saying we that there's a make there's a side housing. You shouldn't have to sleep on the streets because you didn't have enough of the, of the monopoly money. Then on the flip side, you write a song, and everyone in the world wants to sing it to you. In fact, they'll gather ten thousand people at a time to watch you sing and sing with you. Know what I'm saying? Well, then yeah. you deserve your game chip. You deserve, and we all get that. Yeah. But we need to separate that now. We need to we need to say, look, all right, now it's survival. So here's your whatever we need. Whatever we need to do is really to go into the 21st century and still be uh, still have humanity doing the things we're doing. You know what I mean? People dying because they don't have enough money for to pay for a medication for bombing one. It's we have to grow out of it, and I think God is going to force it on us. When, when you look at, you know, I, uh, I looked out my window the other day and there's, there's a mountain range, you know, I'm in the valley and I've never seen it so crystal clear. And when you look, you don't see the trash on the streets like that. Mm -hmm. When you look at just, just our environment, just what we do to our planet and the way we destroy it on a daily basis is like, it's almost like there was a, a, a universe reset that said, okay, y'all are fucking this up. Take a moment, breathe, take a look around, and and, and I love you. Yeah, exactly. I loved your, your you know your comparison to the French Revolution. This this time frame will absolutely go down in history, and hopefully we'll come out. Either we're gonna come out on the wrong side of this, or 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 the right side. And I and I hope it's the right. I hope that the time away has given all of us a perspective to love each other more, love our planet more, love the next man more, and and we can all be better from it. Because uh, I think you're right. We need it to slow down. Just this year alone, the fact that I was stressed between, do I go to, to Super Bowl, All-Star, or uh, 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 Sundance, because it's all at the same time, made me realize that 15 years ago, the world wasn't moving this fast, bro. Yeah. You can do one thing, and you can move in a way, and, and, and like now it's like, yo, I can't imagine being 16 years old and feeling like, oh my God, Coachella, oh my God. Like there's a festival every week. Yeah. Like, it's, crazy. it's like, we need to slow down a bit. Yeah, we're, you know, we're just, we're just eating. You know what I mean? We're just eating, eating, eating and wondering why we're getting fat. We're, we're, we're just flying through. There's just so much stuff to do. We're so, we're, we're basically purposeless, which is, is what's happened, right? We are, uh, as a, at least the first world, we're spoiled teenage kids who parents handle everything. We just, so all we do is fuck around, right? So yeah. well, what do we, there, no, there's no one giving us a mission. There's no one saying, let's clean up the planet. Let's do nothing. So we just do stuff. Well, all right, well, there's nothing meaningful to do. Then we'll just do whatever. Let's go hang out. Let's go to Coachella and then we'll go to the Super Bowl and then we'll do Burning Man. Want to come to Burning Man? My friend's doing something, but let's go Burning Man. All right, cool. We're at Burning Man. We're, so we're just doing what we, we can do. Because again, we're, 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 we're really purposeless right now. And we need, we, need, we need a moment again, and perhaps this is what's going on, where humanity says, we're doing this. You know, we're cleaning the ocean. Yeah. We're cleaning the air. We're, but we're so tied to the money. And um, that's the, really the key. Like Jeff Bezos is gonna come out a trillionaire on this. There, this is the, have you ever seen that headline? Of course, bro. I use Amazon every day, bro. It's yeah, we crazy. all do it. It's crazy. Meanwhile, his workers, you know, meanwhile, they fired the kid, a you know, black kid from Staten Island. Yeah. It was like, yo, we're dying in here. There's people with the fucking, I'm a manager, and I know these people have a virus, and you ain't telling everybody, how about we go on strike? How about you're fired? <laughs> Jeff crazy. Bezos was, yo, Bezos was in the room. Like I said, I'm left, right? I'm a lefty left. He was in the room at the meeting talking about how they're going to discredit the kid saying, yo, yes, brother. They're like, yo, well, he's not that educated and he doesn't sound intelligent. So what we'll do is, these are common, the, the man's about to be a trillionaire trying to fuck over a guy who's making how many dollars above minimum wage? What? You, you know what I mean? Like, you can't do this. Okay, we're not, we're not in it, in it. You know, we're very blessed. Yeah, we don't have our own private jets. You know what I'm saying? But we live, you know, living a wonderful life in the entertainment industry. Yep. There's a world of people who, ain't near this shit, ain't got no connection to it. And they, all they know is they're starving. And they just spent five hours in a lineup to get a box of food from the food bank. 
Yeah. And Jeff Bezos is a trillionaire and still refuse and is cutting cutting his workers' time at, at Whole Foods so he doesn't have to pay their health care. Bro, shit snaps, eh? And and you know, we're allocating trillions of dollars of, of government funding that's happening all over the world. And it's going to big businesses. It's not going to the, you know, the barber shops and the and the beauty salons and the, the car washes down in Inglewood. It's going to Ruth Chris and yeah. Top Golf and you know, no, like Lakers. <laughs> yeah, Lakers, the LA Lakers. So it's I, I agree with you. It's the distribution of, of, of wealth. Uh, the class system is, is gonna come to a breaking point and it's, and it's like, you're right. It, there needs to be more organized efforts and it's, and it's good that minds like yours, like mine, like, like we're all able to kind of sit away from projects, not worry about manning a, a, a production set right now and really focus on, okay, What's the legacy that we're all gonna live? Now, when I have conversations with Puff, it's like, all right, we've done all these things, right? What is the, the, the legacy that we're gonna leave behind? How are we gonna leave the planet in a better place? How are we gonna leave the, the, the system in a better place than it was when we left it? Because I do feel like this is the generation, these past 50 years, 75 years, we're the ones that have done the most damage. We've done more damage than the past million years of of, of, of homo sapiens on, on this earth you know and so yeah. it, it's uh it's a rare opportunity to take a pause and, and and try to figure out some methods to correct it as well well i, I feel like as a, as a species i feel like humanities metaphorically we are leaving our teenage years we're 18 now you know what i'm saying and you remember you're a teenager and 18 was the big one because like oh if i get in trouble with the cops it's no more young offenders there's no i'm I'm going into the system, you know what I'm saying? You're leaving home and now you got to make money for real. And like the, the responsibility of the choices you make and the life you're going to live are, can you, there's no illusion about yeah. it anymore. And that's where we're at now. The, the choices we make with how we generate power, how we, how we grow our food um, now have real consequences for the planet that we understand how we uh, treat the poor, how we deal with sickness, things like this. All right, well, you don't wanna pay people uh, a living wage and you don't wanna give them health care. So when they get sick, they gotta go to work. But now the sickness spreads by touch and cough. You don't know, you know, the, the, the trip of a, a minimum wage $7 an hour guy who has to work two jobs to, to scrounge and he's a, he works in a grocery store and he has some other essential job, but can't afford a car the sickness that he spreads going from point A to point B that knocks out how many people? There's a grocery store in LA, 19 of the employees got, have COVID. How many people walked into that place and got sick? You know what I mean? So it's not this, there's, and within all this, you know, reopen, reopen, there's all this underlying vibe, like they're not, I'm not getting sick. Yeah. We need to reopen. And you just feel like you think you're, somehow you think you're it's them. And it's always that same shit. It was always that, you know what I mean? And it's so deep rooted into our culture that sickness is something for the other. Yeah. Uh, poverty, it's, it's always the other people's thing. And since it's the other people's thing, fuck them, make them do it. Mm -hmm. it it's a wake up, man. Like, I know not everyone, you know, look, we, there's revolt and we in the culture. So there's a lot more folks going to listen to us who have an understanding of God and universe and some form of belief in it. The universe is at work. God's at work. You know, we've all had those experiences in our life. We're like, oh, that ain't, this is not random. Mm -hmm. Right? No, no, it's no. not random, man. I think I'll, I'll hit you with, like, I'm, I wonder, and this is just, you know, we, we should have some, a, a blunt and some alcohol to have this talk. But I wonder, I, remember when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And right, very, so soon afterwards, we got 9 11. Mm -hmm. And then Kobe died and we got hit with this. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, I can't, those are the two examples I can think in my head, but I wonder if there's something where we lose someone that just hits everybody. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start really watching, but because when Leah died, everyone was so rocked. When Kobe died, everyone was so rocked. And then this. There are these paradoxical universal shifts, I believe. I believe everything is connected. I, I, I believe all of us, you know, in the, in the way of all drops in a cup of water are all connected, even if you pour it out, I, I believe that we're all connected. And, and yeah, I, I think that the energy with some human beings, sometimes the pendulum shifts. Uh, but I mean, you know, there's so many different ways to look at it. Um, 
And, and, and I just think regardless of how we put it into perspective, it's like this is a time for us to really reflect and try to come up with some solutions. If we don't come up with solutions now, we're all going to be in, in, in serious trouble for sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Look, we, we have the money, the health, the, just our entire society. We can't leave the house. Yeah. Right. And I, I know there's a bunch of places like, fuck it, we're just going to go back to normal. It don't work like that. No. It, this is not how this, you know, we're, we're, we're really in it. We're really in it. And uh, yeah. these are, these are some, we're, we're, it's unprecedented. Even, even during World War, even, even during a war, there's people who are working and making money, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 this, this is just, we're just in something that we never, you can't go outside, you can't be around people. And if you do, the risk of spreading the sickness and who, know, who knows what this means for us. But at the same time, we've needed a change. We've, we've needed a change and I know power is not gonna give it up so easily, but the, we just can't go on like this. 100%. Well, listen, man, you and I, you know, we could talk all day, you know, over here offline, man. Uh, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, give everybody all your Instagram handles and everybody uh, so they can follow you. Um, it is Director X um, on IG. I'm barely on Twitter, but it's iDirectorX on Twitter. But uh, Director, Director X on Instagram. And actually check out um, Operation Prefrontal Cortex on Instagram uh, at op.pfc, which is a program that I've started with some friends to reduce gun and mass violence through meditation. So uh, check that out, man. Like you said, we, got, we, got to, we have to give back. We have a, some things we need to work on, you know? 100%, man. That brother is changing the game and changing the culture. We had to check in and make sure he's good. I hope you good. My name is Sarah J. I'll see y'all next week. Love, bro. Yeah, bro. Peace, bro.